What's going on, guys? Still active show, episode number six. How we doing? We're back at it. I'm Matthew Cano. Matthew Barton, founders of Still Active. How we doing? Feeling good this week. We got an exciting episode with a very special guest. Uh, you know, we did a solo a little episode last time. It's all jokes, honestly. Some good, some good content, but you know, we we're kind of loose with it. You know, change of pace, whatever. Nonetheless, we have a very special guest. You want to introduce him, Barton? The one and only. AVA Aceto. How you fucking doing? Antonio Aceto, baby. How are we doing? Let us go. Fellas. The man, the myth, the legend in the flesh. Oh, what is Happy good? All right, let, let's get into it. Let's get into the bread and butter. Oh, wait, no. That'd be meat and potatoes. All right, let's get into it. Nonetheless, so Mr. Aceto, who are you and what do you do? Oh, man. I am, my name is Antonio Cito, owner of AVA Coaching. I do a couple different things in uh, my crazy 24 years of life. Uh, pretty much starting with my coaching, with my uh, personal training brand, I bounce around with uh, a couple different things. I like to do a lot of online coaching. I've done in person as well, um, a lot of programs. I offer, at the moment, programming and online coaching. Um, that's my That's my biggest push right now. Uh, with the new year coming up, I got some ideas flowing. We're going to see what happens. I want to get some shirts out there, um, some challenges. If anyone tapped into my my 100 floors challenge on uh, fit, on my fitness page the other day. Yes, sir. It was tough, but uh, stuff like that I want to get rolling. But uh, aside from that, you know, working, doing, staying busy, all that kind of stuff. But, yeah, you know, my biggest thing that I like to, I like to keep up is the – the coaching and, and the brand so just like you guys you know just out here trying to hustle and get it how we can and you know keep it pushing so hell yeah i love that what i mean what sparked your passion for fitness and training uh i started getting into fitness really young matt was there um a couple of other our other good buddies were really there too uh luckily i got brought into it Kind of, sort of out of my own will, but it worked out in the long run. Um, when I was in ninth grade, my dad had a really good buddy who used to own a gym, and he had a bunch of equipment left over. Matt knows. Yeah, and he had a bunch of equipment left over in his garage. Long story short, we ended up going there, uh, getting into it, teaching us everything from, you know, what we can do, what we can't do. You know, the blood, sweat, tears, everything that we've done in that garage really set the foundation for not just myself, but I'm sure Matt can speak on it as well. Uh, a handful of our other good buddies that definitely watching this will relate. And that right there sparked not only my passion, but just my overall like involvement in fitness. You know, if I never did that, who knows where I would have been with it. I think I would have always kind of been in the gym, but it would have been a little bit different of an approach. Um, but, you know, seeing how that went down with also a mix of working at gyms pretty much from my senior year to currently, um, I saw a lot of personal trainers in my time working at those gyms and the transformations that they were able to make, um, you know, the impact that they were able to make on people's lives, not just physically, but, you know, mentally. And of course, there's that whole push to it, too. But I definitely think that that made me get a little bit more into the personal training aspect. Of course, like being with a trainer from my, from the get go, kind of, you know, instead of just going in on my own, having someone there one on one with me kind of helped me like get that side of it as well. but also, you know, seeing all those other people do it kind of made me want be like, ah, I want to do this too, you know, and then talking, thinking about it for a while, you know, talking with you guys actually too, I was just like, hey, you know, might as well make my own, my own business, my own little brand out of it. So we're getting that going. And, uh, you know, it's been, it's been a while. I think I started it two almost two years ago. Yeah, it was January 2021. So it's been a while now. I've dealt with a handful of different clients. I love it. Um, you know, I really enjoy seeing people from the beginning day check in to the end, um, seeing what we can do. I've dealt with a lot of different handful of clients. I've dealt with fat loss clients. I've dealt with strength. I've dealt with a lot of athletes. Um, I've dealt with post-pregnant. I've dealt with elderly. I've dealt with 
turning 13 years old, just getting into it kind of thing. Um, so I've had my fair share of uh, experiences in my short two years, but we're excited to see where we can take it from there. Oh yeah, bro, dude! I can't believe it's been almost two years at that point. Oh no, I it's know. been yeah, that's nuts. Yep. Yeah, yeah, congrats, so bro. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, it was kind of like during COVID when everything was shut down. Actually, that was kind of a push on it too. Um, you know, when everything was shut down and people were going more for the online coaching side of it, uh, I had a lot of free time as we all did, and I just really, you know, sat down and tapped into my personal training, the the NASM and all that other good stuff, and you know, certified. Done. So NASM's yeah. your certificate. Yep, I'm, Yeah, I got it right here. Show the cam. Hell yeah, let's go, baby. Tap in. Yep. Guys, love it. Yeah. Also, too, actually, while I'm showing that, I'm gonna set this aside here. I might as well show off the logo. That actually, that actually, the kid Matt Barton made. He didn't make Hell this yeah. specifically. This was a gift from my sister, which was very nice, very cool. But shout out, shout out you know, it's got everything on it. So I know it's probably flipped with the with the camera, but no, it's not. Yeah, looks good, bro. No, it looks good. Yeah, yeah, so, it's every, orientation's right. No, that's sick, dude. Shout out B for that. Yeah, shout out B. She's probably gonna let's see if she'll tap into this one. Who knows? <laughs> we'll have to tag her in the post. <laughs> we could do that. Yeah, why not? Yeah, dude. So that's wild. All right. So yeah, you've had, you know, definitely fair share of clients, all different walks of life, different experiences. That's huge. What would you say is your favorite, your go-to? Like if you could just train one specific group of people, what would it be? Yeah. Uh, I Well, it's funny because I'm going to say this answer and currently at the moment, I don't have any. But I did deal with a bunch of athletes, and I I love working with athletes. Anyone that knows me knows, you know, throughout my whole sports career, I really dove into that aspect of it. Um, I love working with, you know, specifically football. I like football. I like track. Um, I can get down with anything else. It's all kind of the same stuff. You know, we're going to teach speed, agility, quickness, all that kind of stuff. So athletes are definitely my, I guess you could say, like, niche. But, um programs in the garage that we were just speaking about but for the most part um i've dealt with i like dealing with athletes and and sticking around that group of that group of people it's the competitiveness i mean you know everyone kind of has that if you're reaching out to a personal trainer i feel like you kind of have that competitiveness already like you want to you know take that further step but something about athletes they really uh you know they got that little push in them especially young athletes you know high school college too obviously but high school athletes seem like they really want to get going yeah it's definitely important to realize like the benefit of a trainer like it doesn't matter how experienced or knowledgeable you are yeah trainers are always beneficial like nba nfl all these professional athletes they don't stop getting training like they know what they got to do but the trainer is there to you know push them past their limits pull them accountable it's exactly that's what I was gonna say. It's definitely more of like a you know I think I might know everything, but it's more of like a accountability accountability thing. Like it's I I want to have you know somebody that's in my corner that's you know laying the path for me and reminding me every day like hey do this do that you know did you do this did you do that. Um, there's a lot of good trainers out there that I know myself that have trainers like have coaches like you know it's like a common thing um i've reached out myself actually shout out joe from elite um i've reached out to him yeah joe cool he'll 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 be getting his way on here i know that part but uh he's actually helped me a little bit with my diet you know and i've I've dialed in on a couple other things with him and talked to him and you know it's good to just have someone like that in your corner why would you you know especially being you know someone new to it why would you not want a little bit of help you know, backing you up along the way. Um, but like you oh, said, yeah. Darren, yeah, even professional, I mean, professional athletes, of course, you know, they have it all day, every day. So it definitely makes a difference. And more than just the physical side of it, you know, a lot of the mental too, you got to have the mindset to check in. So 
Yeah, oh definitely. yeah. Well, I think too, like even <clears throat> past that, just to have like, you know, somebody there that like, you know what I mean? Like if like you're training one day, you're like, oh man, like my shoulder feels a little weird or whatever. And then like, you can just be like, Hey, you know, I was doing this, my shoulder started to feel weird. Like what's going on? You know what I mean? So yep. it's just like, it's just a plethora of knowledge at your disposal almost, you know what I mean? And I think it's, it's beneficial for both the client and the trainer. Um, you know, especially being a couple years in, I mean, I'm sure you've learned a lot just from like your clients too. Like, definitely. Yeah. I've always kind of been, I've always kind of felt like I was a little bit more of like a people person. So I definitely can, yeah. you know, get the feels and the words and all that stuff out that, you know, might not come off the rip of someone that's a little bit more timid, which a lot of the clients kind of are like that, you know, they, they reach out and they want help. But at the same time, they're a little, you know, timid. They, they don't want to kind of dispose everything that they have or everything that is going on with them. Uh, so you, it, part of it is, and I'm sure everyone watching this that's a trainer can, can attest, is that, you know, you got to kind of be almost like a, not like a therapist, but you almost kind of got to be like, a, you know, you got to just hear them out. They might, come, they might come to you one day and say, hey, man, I had a really bad day today. Like, I'm not feeling too good, you know. I might miss my workout. What should I do? This, that, whatever. And you got to talk to them. You can't just be like, ah, go back tomorrow. You know what I mean? You got to give them a little boost. You got to talk to them, see what's up. So it's, it goes a little bit deeper than definitely just, you know, giving you the workout and being like, boom, go, you know, see you in eight weeks, you know? So it's kind of like a mentorship almost, yep. you know, um, mentorship, trainer, like you said, therapist yeah that's life coach like the, exactly that's i know? like the term coach a lot because coach kind of sums it all up into one i feel like you know when i think of trainer is kind of i think of okay we're in the gym i'm gonna tell you do this do that do this do that if it's a coach it's kind of you know that but also like you were saying a little bit more like mentor a little bit more like motivation a little bit more you know all that kind of stuff so I definitely what, like the term coach. Yeah, that's what coaches are too. Cause like think about your, you know, coaches in the past or even Cal. You know what I mean? Definitely. Like how many life lessons has he just taught you through the gym? Oh, definitely. Like, no, a hundred percent. I got as a coach. Yeah. Like, no, nah, yeah. like I mean, and he's he's mentioned it, you know, and I'll just add into it too. Like Cal well, for me personally, if it wasn't for Cal, like I wouldn't be anywhere near where i am as far as like knowledge and like true like experience like I and mean, we're talking like real raw experience i mean like this wasn't just uh all right here's your program follow it stay consistent i'm here if you have yeah. questions like it was an, an intensive training like we'd go to the garage and he'd be there waiting for us and you better not yeah. be late oh and you better not and you better not miss miss a workout either you know what i mean i'll like, never i'll never forget <laughs> some of the times I, there was times that he had, I mean, we, we, we signed up for it, you know? So before yeah, I, really, no. before we say, say too much about how it really went, you know, we got to let the people know that we, we willingly went there at 15, 16, 17 years old, like knowing 100%. we were going to get our butts kicked. People 100%. were left and right puking. Um, you know, we had people, I'm sure I, we've had people leaving there crying. I mean, people, not everyone lasted there. It, it no, was definitely, no. I'm, I'm honestly, honest to God, forever grateful for that man and, and what we did there. Cause that was, you know, I'll never forget. Can we, can we cuss on here or are we going to, yeah, yeah, yeah. Out? Not cuss. I cuss. So I'll, I'll never forget. He, one day we were there. It was one of the first, probably within the first year, one of the first few months we were there and we were sitting there. And there was like, like I was saying, we started at probably about like 15, 16. So we were a little younger as like, you know, a lot of 15, 16 year olds are kind of a little immature, a little, you know, not, not too serious about something that's, I guess, so new. And I'm sitting there and I, it's just, so there's a couple of us there, a couple of us are outside, but me and Cal are inside and we're sitting on a bench and he goes to me, he looks at me. I just finished a set. He's watching me do my set. I just finished a set. He looks at me, he goes, Hey, he goes, you know, when you're in here, you can't fuck around. And I'm like, I know, you know, and that kind of, I swear, I'll never forget. It's something so little, but I'll never forget it. It's like, you know, when you're doing something, it kind of pushed a little bit more than just, you know, right then and there in that gym, in that moment. It, it's it's kind of like with life. If you're going to do something, you got to be serious about it. If you really want to do it, you got to be serious about it. You can't fuck around. So 
I mean, I, within I, ten. Something exactly within ten. Yeah, it's you gotta you gotta apply that pressure and you gotta do it with intent. So I definitely well, I'll never forget. It's so little, but I'll never forget that moment. And honest to God, it, it goes with me through a lot of places in life. So again, well, forever yeah. forever grateful for that man. I'm glad we're able to give him his flowers on this episode because. Honestly, yeah. Uh, I, I talk to him still often. I, I haven't seen him in a while. I should stop down. Usually around the holidays, I talk to him. Uh, I like to keep in touch with him, but yeah. But yeah, dude, no. I'll talk a little bit about him. Absolutely. And like, for sure, that man deserves his flowers. Then to kind of like go along with your comment about like not fucking around, just from me going there, and I'd say fitness in general and, and everyone watching this who, you know, has fitness in their life and is passionate about it, like, that discipline and dedication and consistency will often translate to other areas of your life. One hundred percent. Just you know, like sports, and, yeah. Just like yeah. I say in sports, and anyone that's played a high school sport can definitely say that they've heard what you learn here in the sport will transition to your life. It's the same thing with lifting. I mean, it's the same thing with anything that you want to do and put passion in and take seriously. You know, the lessons that you're learning an instrument. You know, learning how to as long as you are actually learning that you have to take time and effort and the values that come with all that, you'll definitely learn something more than just that skill, you know? Damn, this boy dropping game with the coaches too. That's why it's so important to get, you know, good coaches in these roles because they're, you know, teaching the youth they're, they're laying these life lessons out there for them. So it's very important, you know, who, who you have as a coach, who these, who you choose as your personal trainer, like these things all matter. Like you really want to be following and getting information from someone that you look up to, you know, that's kind of on your path, doing the things you love to do. Definitely. And that's why I like to, you know, I like to take pride in that I'm I'm a younger trainer, so I can relate to a lot of these younger athletes. Like not that long ago, I was in their shoes, you know, not that long ago, I was, you know, going through those sports and going through that mindset of, oh, school, sport, job, workout, all juggling, all that. It's not necessarily easy, but it's doable. So I like to, uh, you know, be relatable with my clients. That's a big thing that I like to say. I like to be like transparent and I like to be relatable. So Dude, that goes a long way. If you can level down yeah. with them and, you know, be like, all right, you know, listen, man, I, I know what you're going through, but it's going to be worth it. You know, you just got to stick to the plan. Da, 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 da. Like, that goes a long way. And like anything, not even just the coaching, dude, anything. 100%. Like, I used to say it all the time with the te- with my high school teachers. It's the, it's the best when you can relate. You know, it's the best when you know how I'm feeling from the teacher to the student aspect, from the athlete to the coach aspect, from, you know, all, all different kinds. You know, you want to somebody that you're learning something from you want them want them to put themselves in your shoes and be like okay i'm starting from square one not starting from square 10 you know it's definitely right. big but even like you know i'm sure you have some clients where they may be going something like the postpartum and stuff like that obviously you haven't gone through that you know what i mean it's Correct. physically it's yeah. physically impossible but but with that being said you're the type of person and when you're in that type of role is like you know how to navigate it and still level down with them and be relatable in the sense of like, Hey, look, you know, like I haven't gone through it, but I can't imagine how, you know, it's making you feel, but I'm here for you. I'm here to help you. Tell me your issues. Let me help you. Let's get through this. And we're going to come out on top. And I think that, you know, it takes a special type of person to be a coach, to be a trainer, because it's not for everybody, you know, like it's really not, it's really not for everybody. No, it's not easy. Um, I mean, it's definitely not. I've actually recently, it's funny that we're kind of, it's funny that you actually said that, Matt, because I recently had a couple of people reach out to me on my page about, you know, how did you get into personal training? How did you start your business? Uh, what's the route like? Is it easy? Is it hard? And I gave it to them raw. I told them how it is. And I, I told them it's easy to go on nasm.com.org and buy the bundle, you know, take your practice exams, read the book, take your final. The final is a little difficult, I will say. Um, anyone, this might not be something that a lot of people know, but I, I believe it's 100 questions. I know that. I believe you have to get 75 correct. I got 78 correct. So I just got by, but I got by. So I took 
the thing is, is the, the exam is a little bit more difficult, but all that stuff in, in total is easy. You could sit down, you could read the book, you could study, you know, and you'll pass, you'll pass if you put the time in. But the hard part is, you know, not only going out and finding your clients or, or applying yourself at whatever gym you're at or, or whichever route you take. Uh, it's, it's, you know, dealing with people to people relations. Everyone's different. I don't think, I don't think off the top of my head, I've dealt with any two clients that are the exact same. I've dealt with, you know, athlete and athlete. I've dealt with old, like elderly and elderly. I've dealt with, you know, same type group of people, but you know, one might have a hip injury. One might have a shoulder injury. One might be playing basketball. One might be playing bowling. You know, it's, it's all, it's always different. So you really got to be versatile with it, which is something it's funny. I, I actually just said that because I, I love that. I love, you know, that quote, be versatile, but it's something that you really got to be for, your, for a trainer, you know, a coach, something along those lines, because you're going to be dealing with all different kinds of people and you never know. And I mean, you know, you could have someone that wants to get a three month package and they're, you know, they got a lot of stuff going on and that's okay. You just got to kind of deal with it. So, you know, work your way around it and, and go from there. So. Yeah. I mean, you're a business owner, so, you know, same applies. You're wearing a bunch of different hats. You kind of got to, you know, take control and reins over all of those different aspects on the business side of things, as well as you still got to focus on your clients and like the actual meat and potatoes of, you know, training. Definitely. All the meat and potatoes. Love meat and potatoes. That we dog must stay food. bulking. Dog, dog food. food. Yeah. They know about dog food. I just want to leave you with one last little question before we, you know, move on to our next segment. If you had to give your younger self one piece of advice, what would you say? What would you give? Uh, I would say definitely slow it down between the ears. You know, take your time with whatever you're doing at the moment. Uh, be present. I like that a lot. I like be present a lot. Um, I myself, anyone that knows me personally knows, you know, since I, since I got out of high school, I've been, I've done a lot of different things. I've been trying to figure it out. Um, you know, definitely staying consistent with certain things like the training and all that. But I've found myself in a lot of different situations that I feel like a lot of people can relate to, uh, at this, like, you know, 18 to 25, six, seven age. Um, just like figuring it out. And something that I've always kept in mind is, and actually I, I tell Matt about it a lot when we sit down and we talk about things, um, you know, regarding, you know, what else we got going on. Uh, you know, sometimes you really just got to be present and, you know, realize how far you came, realize what you're doing, you know, never comfortable, but always present and, you know, not thinking too far back in the past, not thinking too far ahead in the future. Um, if you think too far back on your past, you're just going to, you know, trip yourself up over your mistakes, think too far ahead in the future, you're going to overwhelm yourself and get too far ahead. So I definitely like to say, um, if I could go back, I would say be present. Love that. Oh, oh yeah. It's very important. No, for sure. And it's cool too, because like when you find people to, um, have these conversations with um bounce ideas off and uh different analogies different perspectives it's really beneficial like i've learned a lot like you can take something away too um and you kind of mentioned like you know looking back at your past and tripping on your mistakes and stuff like you know when you talk to people about mistakes you've made or you you know talk to other people who are telling you about their mistakes they've made and you know because we all know we can be hard on ourselves you know like every, i'm sure everybody watching this everyone on right now um, you know, you think about something you did that you you maybe, you know, wasn't the best choice you're not proud of. And you're like, damn, I, I don't know why I did that still to this day. That was, you know what I mean? But all you can do when you look back on it is really just like take something away from it. Like there is always good in the bad, you know, whether it's something that you can't change moving forward, you know, like you just learn from that and you're like, okay, I'm not going to do that again. Can't change it. But you know, you can take something away, even if it's a mindset change off of an event. Like there's things that have happened in the past, you know, um, even people, you know, losing people in your life. Um, you know, it just makes you like really like be present with the people that are around you. It's, it's, it's such an applicable statement 
to everything in life is to be present. You know what I mean? For the people that you love, your friends, your family, your goals, um, you know, objectives you want to achieve. That's huge. Um, so where I was going with that whole thing is basically just talk about what's on your mind, be present in the conversation and be present with everything you got going on. I also would like to add to, it kind of ties in with the being present, but it's also, you know, just kind of focus on your own timeline. Cause me and Matt also talk about this as well. You know, there's people out there obviously nowadays in the world that are 14, 15 on TikTok making millions of dollars. And I mean, that's great. Honest to God, anyone that knows me, I applaud those people. I, I think that's great. I, I never, I, I never get jealous. I never try to be like the envious type. I always think, you know, kudos to them. You're doing great. But sitting there and looking at someone that's doing that and being like, dang, I wish that was me isn't going to get you anywhere. You know, it's just, just being more on the sour side of it isn't going to get you anywhere. Being on the, you know, kudos to them, uh, that's awesome side isn't really going to get you anywhere either. But, you know, you got to just understand in the middle, okay, everyone has, has a different timeline. Everyone's, you know, might might not necessarily have it the way you have it or vice versa. And you have to kind of understand it and, you know, roll with what you got you can't really go off of someone else's you know success failures t- where they're at in life you know might a lot of people my age i know oh i'm 24 years old i'm working a part-time job versus oh i'm 24 years old i have a career i have a family i have a house you know it definitely people kind of get caught up in that a lot versus you know focusing on again being present and focusing on themselves and where they're at and what they can do next that for themselves, you know? So, yeah, there's beauty in that too. You know, everyone's got their own timeline and, yeah. uh, you know, seeing 15, 16 year olds making millions of dollars, one, you know, use it as inspiration and it also yeah. gives you hope. You know, right. if these kids are able to do it in a couple of weeks on the internet, like that just means it's possible for you too. It's you know, doable. just got to figure out what you want to do and double down on it. So moral of that is post that video on TikTok. Post that (laughs) video on TikTok. It's funny because I when I started posting my videos, uh, I I posted a lot of my videos on my Instagram, TikTok, um, even a little bit on Snapchat before I even did my training. And a lot of people, you know, what came up to me, honest to God, a lot of people came up to me and said, like, you know, how do you just like film yourself in the gym and not feel like you know, like insecure, like weird. And I, I have a post on my Instagram and it, it says, it, it's a post that says things I wish I knew before I got into the gym. I, I believe it was one of my pin, pin, uh, pin posts on my profile. But, you know, one of the things is, you know, people truly don't care what you're doing. You know, you just got to do what you want to do as long as you're not being rude and you're not in the way and maybe if they're in the video maybe ask them if that's okay or if you crop them out or whatever but you know the thing is nowadays with getting back to how we got on it is everyone's on you know tiktok and instagram and all that stuff and don't get me wrong like people can take it too far and they can get you know a little you know in the way and annoying with the videos and i totally understand that but as long as you're reasonable and you're doing your own thing you know no one could really mess with you. So I would say just, just get on it and post that video for sure. But also I'll put onto that is like, you're always going to have people who talk shit and you're always going to have people who support you. So in that it's like, you know, definitely be reasonable with the content and make it valuable. But like, you know, people are going to hate, but if you're true to yourself, the people who support you and love you are like truly really going to like, you know, like love you and be like, nah, like, I love this guy. Like so many people that I look up to, you know, the hate on all the videos is insane, but I love every video. You so, can't make everyone happy. That's the thing. You really can't make everyone happy. So you might as well make yourself happy. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. And so, the first sign of success, baby, is the hate. Yeah, no one's people ever start hate. That. That's how it goes. No one's ever going to, you're never going to have the full hundred percent support. And if you can't realize that off the rip, then you're in for a rude awakening. You know what I mean? Uh, I mean, I'm sure you guys have dealt with it a little bit, but 
you know, there's definitely not, not everyone's always, you know, there's other, there's other people out there that are doing the same thing that you're doing that want to be better than you, or, you know, people that don't understand your vision or your, or your mission statement or your drive or anything like that. Um, you know, you just got to kind of tune those people out, tune the good in and just keep it pushing. That's what I like to say. Keep it pushing. And most of the time, those people will change their tune when you become like ultra successful. And it's, and I'm not, and and I'm not saying I am or I'm not, but I'm just saying like people that I've seen or whatever, you watch other podcasts with like super famous people or whatever. Like, yeah, "Yeah, that same dude that was, yeah, your career is never going to make it was like, Oh, yo, I went to school with you. Da, da, da. You know what I mean? Like yeah. shit like that. So it's just, it's just stupid. Like all in all, just worry about staying true to yourself and be a good person. You know, I love that too. I love that. When you told me to look for the, um, the Sam that I liked, I was going to, I was going to pick that one. I think that's so important. It's, it's, it's honestly, it's really is. And I'm a firm believer in, you know, it'll all come back. Like all your, you know, what you give out is what you'll get back. So if you're seeing this and you made it this far in the podcast, what are we, 40 minutes in? Well, you know, probably be a little bit less after a couple edits and stuff. But I'm a firm believer, though, that, you know, being a good person is huge. So if you're reading, if you're watching this and you made it this far, do something good tomorrow, today, this week. It's definitely huge. Hell yeah. Love it, bro. <laughs> no, it definitely, uh, definitely going to be beneficial. And, uh, we're going to edit that little part out about that. Um, there's something I want to say. There's something I want to say. And then we'll go to the same. Yeah. Um, right. Hold on. There's something I want to say. What was it? <laughs> so, like you said, you know, you're a firm believer in getting back what you put out there. Um, and I've talked about this in previous episodes, but it's like, it starts with the littlest type, like littlest things. If you're passing someone in the street, the hallway, Hey, how's it going? Good, good. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, you see interviews with people who are going through a lot or whatever. And, you know, I've seen stuff that they're like, just that one person saying hi to me, good morning and holding the door open for me helped change my whole day or like, you know, like, so it doesn't need to be something that you think is like monumental, like life changing. It could be something as little as holding the door open for someone or saying, good morning. How are you? Boom, boom, boom. I mean, you just never know. So yeah. start. No, you, you don't. You know. So whatever. Really I mean, hundred percent. I agree with that. The littlest things can really change someone's mood. I mean, I've personally been there. I've personally been in those situations where it's, you know, kind of a crappy day and, you know, whatever. And someone just says something or does something so little and just like completely 180s your mood, like your whole mood. It's just, it's something, you know, to do so little to impact so a lot is definitely, it's just worth it. Just be a good person. So would you say. Talk to people. Talk to people. A lot of people don't like to talk to people. Talk to people. If you're walking by someone and you see them, hey, how's it going? They might be like, hey, it's good. Boom, boom, boom. It might be a good connection. It's networking right there. You know, I mean, honestly, it sounds cheesy, but that's kind of how things can go sometimes. So, you know. So uh, we are moving on to a Sam. Uh, We're doing it a little differently. This episode, we actually asked Antonio to pick out a Sam that he related to and, uh, you know, wanted to discuss. So he did. And he actually chose Sam number 79. So going a little back, not too, too far. Um, but he chose bat on yourself and the little description that we wrote with that one was, will it always be easy? No. Will it be worth it? Yes. If you can't bet on yourself then who will remember that your outcome is in your hands, trust your abilities and apply pressure. So again, it's pretty straight to the point, heavy hitter. Um, but Antonio, what stuck out about this particular same two that you wanted to discuss it? Definitely. It wasn't. Yeah. I saw, I've, scrolled through and i saw a bunch of sams that i really liked and it's crazy that you guys already are at 79 i mean you're probably at 80 something now 81 to 89 um, 89 yeah that's crazy the sam 100 has to be something crazy something big's coming for the sam 100 i know that yeah um yeah i really like bet on yourself uh the biggest thing from the description that i liked a lot was you know, if you don't, who will? And I think that goes for a lot of other things. You know, if you don't trust yourself, who will? Who will? If you don't, you know, love yourself, who will? If you don't like how you're, you know, 
doing in life and then who will like it's it's you gotta you know and with everything you gotta be able to you know do it yourself before you can picture you know other people kind of doing it i guess we could edit that out but you know what i'm saying i'm trying to get at um no oh, yeah i mean even with this podcast you know a lot of people you know that have discussed it with me and matt a lot of the times they're like oh i i don't know if i wouldn't be able to do a podcast until i've i've made it until i'm successful you know it's, it's the same thing like we're recording this now on our journey to become successful. You know, it doesn't become super valuable until you look back at it, you know, when you've made it. And then these episodes are gold. You know, these are what people are going to be searching up and searching oh, yeah, for. for sure. Yeah. Like, you know, I'm, we're not millionaires yet. You know what I mean? Like you can't really listen to us. If, if that's, you want to fast track to be a millionaire. No. Like we're in our journey right now. We're on chapter what four, you know, Oh, we're not on chapter 20. We're on chapter 6 right now actually to be Well, I was talking years, not. Oh, oh, odds. yeah, yeah. Yeah, but no, I mean like this podcast is for those who are on their own journey right now and like want to be a part of a community of individuals who are going through similar things because like whatever your niche is, whatever, you know, industry you're in, you know, when you are dedicated to something and know what it's like to stay consistent, Regardless if it's a clothing brand, a podcast, uh, a service company, what training, whatever, there's all similarities there in the journey. You know, days where you don't want to do anything, you know, dry, dry spells, uh, setbacks. You know what I mean? There's a, there's common similarities and themes when you decide to do something, you know, that's kind of against the grain, you know, where you do have to bet on yourself because just like anything else, anyone else, when you first start out, everyone's like, oh yeah yeah that's that's cool or like yeah you're gonna be shit da, da 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 like you know what i mean so it's like you really do have to bet on yourself and then when it becomes cool or people start hopping on then it's like oh yeah 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 i know those guys yeah that i dude and I, like like that's the craziest shit is is like we're still so like early on in our journey from where we want to be but that's already happened oh yeah many us, times just like it's like bro like when we announce a page like you fucking shit on us and talk like so it's just it's just funny how it works and to be honest i could give a fuck yeah but i'm just saying it's just like this is for people who are going through similar things like wherever you are on your journey you know and you can grow with us and we want to hear what you're up to uh you know you guys watching this right now what's you know bounce some thoughts off us like we're here for it. like we truly like are like serious about like really trying to form this community support uh, you know like inspiration yeah. to you know to everyone doing exactly what we're trying to do and that's why we have guests on you know what i mean who are going through similar stuff right now like antonio with his training and everything else he's got going on you know he's my real estate partner we're you know getting that going too i mean we're you know it's just a, it's just a journey so you know join us for real because this is what it is we're giving it to you guys straight and that's that's where we are we are and that's it so it is what it is man um but yeah so that was the Sam. Um, now we're going to move on to the next thing. So, all right, Antonio, you've been around. I mean, obviously, you've, you know, been really good friends for years now before we even still active was even a thing. Um, so you've been around since the start, you know, helping us out, doing shoots. He was actually the subject of the first still active shoot. Yes, sir. Up in my grandmother's house in front of the big pine trees in the dead of winter. Five was, years yeah. of non-stop support baby yeah i mean he's that was he's a great done... time that shoot was a great time I remember it was that. fun it was yeah. but nonetheless i mean he stood out in the freezing cold for us he's you know held things for long periods of time or like props whatever it's been all in all you've been with us since the start you know since still active was just a thought um and actually since we're on that topic in episode one we talked about how we met and how still active was you know came about and actually we met at the gym but really through antonio because antonio right. already knew barton and you yeah. know i was really good friends with antonio before too so like yeah i remember forget. the day i remember the day clear as day i i remember so i believe you were already working at the gym matt with me no 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 it was okay. me working with you right and i remember i was training barton like on the job not like personal training i was training him on the job 
And I remember we were closing that day and I remember we closed and I was like, Hey, what are you doing later? Like, you know, he seemed like a cool guy and I ended up pretty much bringing him over to Matt's apartment. And from there, I mean, obviously, you know, here we are now, that was 2018, 19, that was five years ago, four or five years ago, at least five years ago. So yeah. Um, I remember that clear as day. I remember sitting in that back room, throwing out the garbage and being like, Hey man, what are you doing tonight? And then ended up just kind of rolling from there. And you know, here we are, everything kind of worked itself out, but we met through you. So all in all, you've seen it, you know, you've seen the behind the scenes, you've been there for the video shoots. I mean, he's, he's done it all really. So with all that being said, what are your thoughts on the current rebrand that we're doing from still active clothing to still active co, you know, with the podcast, the hub, um, collaborating with influencers and other entrepreneurs, what are your thoughts on the direction of where this is going and since it started anyway? Right. Um, well, I think, I think what really is the biggest thing is how you guys are kind of opening up your possibilities, you know, instead of just doing or being a clothing brand, you guys are starting, obviously, the podcast. You know, we got the Movers Club going. Um, you know, obviously, like you said, a little dabbling into a little bit of other things. Um, I think that's the biggest thing because from the start, it was always more than, you know, the clothing was, you know, the jump. That the clothing was like, all right, we're going to start a clothing brand. Like, you know, here we go. But it was always a little bit more than that. There was always a little bit more, you know, didn't want to just settle to be a clothing brand. And I'm glad to kind of see that happen because, you know, here we are, like we said, still active has been a thing for three years now, four, almost four, five, four or five. So, you know, it's, I'm glad to see that actually happen because there's a lot more, you know, opportunities and possibilities from opening up the brand from just clothing to all those other things. Um, obviously the podcast have got, has gotten some good success just off the rip. Um, I know you guys have some other things in mind. I know we together have some other things in mind. So, you know, seeing how those things will go, will definitely, you know, keep it going. But I think that it's definitely something that, you know, you guys were meant to do instead of just keeping it at clothing, because you can, you guys are, I mean, Barton with the, with the photography, Matt, you're good with all the other stuff too. You know, it's good to not just limit yourself, I guess, to the clothing and expand out a little bit more. So, and I know I've, I've heard a lot of good feedback from it too. Um, you know, I've had a lot of people reach out to me and uh, say a few things, um, you know, a lot of good things about how everything's going. And it's funny, it's always cool when people come up to me and they say, you know, hey, do you know Still Active? Or, hey, I saw you on Still Active Clothing's page, you know, like, what's the deal with them or whatever? And I kind of give them the spiel and let them know and they kind of get into it and they're like, yeah, man, that's awesome, that's awesome. And it's cool to see people that, you know, we don't really know that are kind of like outside of the, you know, initial crowd that we you know that you guys got into when you dropped um kind of get involved with it and again i think that ties back to the rebrand with your expanding your crowd and your audiences you know instead of just because not everyone i mean everyone needs clothes of course but you know not everyone wants to do you know might not want to do a uh, still active uh clo buy a piece of still active clothing they might want to watch a podcast though I mean, you know what I mean? So it kind of just expands your audiences in that way too. So I definitely think it's great. I'm excited to see what else you guys got rolling. I know you guys got some other stuff under your sleeve that you're not telling me. Usually I know all the stuff, but I know there's some stuff that I'm not, I'm missing out on, but I'm excited for the Movers Club too. Um, You know, definitely get that rolling. Very keep soon. Every, keep everything up with that. Um, You know, so yeah. Hell yeah. I appreciate you, brother. We should dabble in on the Movers Club a little bit. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, you've been mentioning the Movers Club, so I'll touch on that a little bit. Um, we've had this flag out and made for two years, maybe a year. Um, so, I mean, the Movers Club is essentially our version of an ambassador program. Um, so Movers is kind of like the tag to it. You know, you know you're know, you doing things, you're moving, you know. I mean, and even deeper than that, um... The Movers Club, before we even decided that we were going to do an ambassador program, um, this actually happened, dude. This was like before Roman was born. Yeah. Like not the flag, but like the whole idea of um, basically the community name. 
it, we wanted to have something to, you know, almost an identity with the brand and community. You know, like this is like the Movers Club was the Movers Club was the community name before we even decided to do an ambassador program, yeah. essentially. Like it was like, what are we going to call ourselves? What are we going to, you know, you know, our so audience? That, yeah. So that people could like kind of form an identity with it, you know, like to be a part of something, because, again, if I don't know if you guys remember, but before we did our rebrand and everything, like our bio for years said it's more than clothing, it's a lifestyle. So we're like, how can we really like hone in on that? You know, and then we decided to do the Movers Club and then now we're doing the podcast and all that other stuff. So essentially, yes, it's the ambassador program that we're going to be coming out with soon. But more than anything, it's like the community name. You know what I mean? It's because to do this type of shit that, you know, like we're talking about on every episode and to go through hardship and face adversity and bet on yourself and no one else is. It's like it takes guts and it's not easy. I mean, setbacks. You know, uh, roadblock after roadblock, jumping through hoops. I mean, if you want to be great, you got to do great things. Like you can't, you know, just wake up and not do shit and expect to be, you know, making an impact on yourself or, you know, the people around you or whatever else. Like you have to like go above and beyond because especially now with the Internet and everything, like it's not how it used to be. Like you have this, you know, at your disposal information on anything you want. You know what I mean? Like it's actually very easy to learn. I mean, you could you could be like. Hey, Siri, what's this? Or, hey, Alexa, what's this? You know what I mean? And have that piece of information in an instant. So now I feel like you have to work even harder to, you know, break through the noise and, like, get noticed in whatever industry you're doing. You want to, like, start a community or something like that or, you know, be a trainer or, you know, whatever else you got going on. Like, you got to, like, work harder to cut through the noise because everybody and their brother has all these things. But consistency will show. And Antonio always likes to say consistency over everything, everything, which is true. I mean, he's going at it for two years now. We're going on four or five years. I mean, that's the thing. That's how you'll set, you know, set yourself apart and get noticed. Like at the end of the day, consistency over everything. And to remain consistent is a lot easier said than done. 100%. Like people will be like, you need motivation, da, 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 da. But it's like consistency over motivation, like doing the things you don't want to do, like doing the things you need to do that you necessarily don't want to do at that moment will set you apart from the rest. That's where the resilience comes in. Yeah, you know? of course, there's definitely a lot of other, you know, motivation, resilience, all those other, you know, aspects of, you know, something along the lines of consistency over everything. But what I like to tell a lot of my clients and and just people that I talk to in general is, is if you, just for example, clothing, the clothing brand still active, if you guys had all those other attributes, you know, consistency, resilience, motivation, you know, drive, all that stuff, and but you took away consistency, it wouldn't be nothing. And that's how it is for everything, not just the gym, not just, you know, a, a business or clothing brand, um, you know, everything. relationships, life, dieting, you know, saving money, like at, no matter what it is in your life, if you think of all the little pillars that add up to keep it going, if you took out consistency, it's all just going to crumble. That's just the truth. I mean, seriously, cons that's why I say I'm going to put it on a shirt. I'm going to put it on a shirt. Consistency over everything. Maybe that'll be my uh, my first mover, Movers Club shirt. Hell yeah. I, I love that. I love that so much. Seriously, I think consistency is the biggest thing. So, of course, the other things are important. A hundred percent, but you know, consistency over, over everything. So definitely love that. With Thanksgiving being a couple days behind us now, our question of the week is going to align. What are you thankful for? Boom. Question of the week, guys. What are you thankful for? Aceto, what are you thankful for, buddy? I'm definitely thankful for a lot. I always say, and I always think this is super underappreciated, you know, something that people overlook a lot is your overall health. Um, a lot of people take that for granted. I mean, seriously, you know, I always think of how there's people out there that have serious, un, you know, unprovoked, something that they can't do anything about health problems. And, you know, then there's people out here that have it pretty good and that you know are doing just fine so i always always say you know obviously 
obviously 100 percent you got your family and friends and all that 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 goes with it you know that's top tier stuff but your health is right along there uh with it you know if you you know if you were to be put in the shoes of somebody you know even like nap it's you know i didn't even think of that when i said it but how you guys had nap on a couple episodes ago you know, I'm sure he would attest to the same thing. It's just super underrated, you know, and it kind of hit him, you know, like a wall out of nowhere when he found out that he had it. So, um, you know, it's definitely something that people take for granted and that I try to, you know, each day acknowledge and be grateful for. So obviously, like you know, family and friends, but health is health is huge. So take care of yourself. It's major. I would agree. Yourself. Seriously. I would agree. Yeah. Because again, you know, like we were saying, or like I was just saying, a lot of the stuff is unprovoked that people have, but then you got the other side of it with people that are drinking eight sodas a day and get diabetes and they're like, ah, oh, man. So, you know, take care of yourself now so you won't pay for it later. And again, I mean, if you start on the right track right now and you stay consistent over time, you'll be good to go. So Sign definitely up a big thing. Yeah, yeah I'll, get, I'll get you off them. So yeah, he'll, get, he'll get you right. <laughs> you ever hear of <laughs> seltzer water? <laughs> <laughs> you ever hear of those hills at Brookwood? Yeah. I love that. Yeah, I would love That's actually, it's funny. Uh, we didn't get to touch on it earlier. Um, I know we kind of wrapped up the segment, but something else big that I want to get rolling for next year in the summertime is uh, summer camps. Like I want to get some summer camps going for high school athletes. Um with a bunch of different things going, you know, like a speed camp, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff like that. And it's funny because Matt just mentioned our, our high school football, uh, where we used to practice and there's just a hill there. That's massive. Uh, It's debatably, I can't off the top of my head. I can't think of a hill that's really that compares, but it's huge. That thing thing sucks. It takes bodies. It it takes bodies. (laughs) I mean, to say the least. So yeah. Yeah. I've witnessed people like not make it up and just roll down hundred <laughs> percent. So with those camps um, that you plan on getting together, I mean, that's, I think that'd be huge for AVA coaching and um, just for the kids as well. But I have a request, hold a camp for us old farts over here. You know what I mean? I still need to keep my joints loose. You know what I'm saying? Come on. Definitely. Come on. Hey, it's open to anyone. It's open to anyone. So when we, uh, when I get it rolling, we'll see what we can do. Maybe we'll have like a wheelchair competition for, for you two. For us, for us older guys, but uh, no, it'll be open for everyone. So when I when that time comes, that time will come, and I'll make the announcement, and uh, it'll be you know smooth sailing. I'm sure everyone will see it that's watching. But yeah, definitely more than just high school athletes, but mostly. Sick, dude. Yeah, that'll be elite, bro. Definitely huge for the area. Not a lot of people are doing that, especially you know, in the more condensed valley area. You know, you see some in Utica area, but nothing around here like that. No. So that's besides cause. Yeah, I got high hopes for that shit though. Like <laughs> no, like for real. Shout like, out cuz. Hundred percent. You know, if you know, you know. Yeah, that's right. So all right. So you're thankful for your health overall. How about you, Byron? What are you thankful for? I would say, you know, very thankful for the people I love. Um friends, family. Definitely freedom, you know, ability to kind of make your own decisions, travel where you want to go. Um, as well as, you know, health. I think that's a great one. I never will overlook having great health. You know, the ability to wake up in the morning, feel good, breathe, stand up on your own two feet, you know, just be able to take care of yourself is a blessing. So. Yeah, dude, definitely. And I think, um, you know, you both have mentioned take care of yourself. So a lot of people wake up and have that choice. You know what I mean? So hopefully you're making the right choices because maybe one day you won't have that choice, you know? Um, And I think, you know, to piggyback off your freedom comment, like having the freedom to make that choice, like there's been people very close to me and I'm sure, you know, a lot of people watching, you know, who you've seen like get diagnosed with something or have some crazy shit happen. Like there's just like randomly happens out of nowhere. I mean, I myself, I'll reveal it. I don't give a shit. I had a kidney stone when I was 18 years old. Um, and that was bad. Like that affected my life, you know, and, uh, it runs in my family too. Um, pretty bad. Like 
couple of close family members have been like going through some crazy shit with the have one body for the rest of your life and trust me like i used to think i was invincible when i was a teenager and you know you're a young person young kids you know that's great you know it's like oh man that's crazy that won't happen to me da, 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 da. but guess what it might and that's just oh, the realness wow. that's the realness of it so take care of yourself and make the right choice while you still have the choice then it goes back a couple episodes when we were saying call yourself out directly applicable get off the soda <laughs> yeah no i love that call yourself out too that's a really good one i like that a lot if you can't call yourself out then you know you got to be able to check yourself 100 percent, always for everything yeah. and you just, deal with that yeah you deal with that directly with you know dealing with other people being yeah. accountable. well of course i i you know i can I, as a coach as a trainer you know i can only do so much I can't make, I can't walk you to the gym and, and do your, you know, leg extensions for you and walk on the treadmill for you. I can't do any of that. So, you know, I give you what you need. And at the end of the day, you got to do what you got to do. But, you know, if you're slacking or if you're, you know, something's going on, you got to be able to yourself, you know, look yourself in the mirror and be like, hey, like I'm not doing enough or hey, like, you know, and it goes with everything. You know, a lot of the things, a lot of the things that I feel like I said in this episode that, you know, we touched a lot on my, my training and coaching, but a lot of the things that we talked about, I feel like go with a lot of things in life, you know, I mean, so, you know, not just with training and coaching, but always you should be able to check yourself. You know, you got to be able to check yourself hundred percent. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, a lot of these things can just be easily, you know, applied to regular everyday life, but, and that's the crazy thing. Like life doesn't have to be too complicated. It's really not, you know, you break no. it down, take care of yourself and appreciate things, you know, just go through life one step at a time, be present and do the right things. Definitely. And, and you're going to get where you want to be. Like Matt said, you have one life. So one life, one chance. Got to do it right. H2O, if you know, you know, <laughs> but yes. Yeah, so. Hold on, hold on, hold on one sec. Another part of what we're touching on is I've been seeing a bunch of stuff online lately of like, you never want to regret not going so hard. You never want to have like regret of not doing what you could have done. Like you never want to be at the end of your life and be like, damn, if I just, you know, took those five, 10 years to put my head down and grind, I could have been, been and done what I wanted to do by now. But and unfortunately, that happens way more often than people think and realize. And if you don't call yourself out now, it's going to continue. And that could end up being you. And I, like I've experienced that in my life already. Up college, it's like, damn, like I definitely could have put a couple more hours in the gym and, and really, you know, went crazy with it but if you don't have extreme dedication you're not gonna have the extreme results so that's another life lesson you can definitely take from sports that was good i like that a lot i mean definitely you know looking back again you know check yourself now so you don't have to check yourself later so you know because you can't look back and be like ah i wish i did this i wish i did that you know and of course, you could always look ahead, but again, back to what, you know, something we were touching on earlier, being present, you know, you check yourself now, it'll all work out in the long run. So 100%. Let's circle back to, to Matt and see, you know, what Matt's think before over there. So I know he's got a handful of things, but let's hear it, Matt. A little, a little old me. I guess, you know, I, of course, friends, family, health, you know, ev everything, you know everything but honestly i'm really thankful for a lot of the hardship and bad shit i had to experience in my life um and i say that because it taught me some of the most valuable lessons over the good times and it really helped me appreciate the good times more than anything um and life moves fast i remember being you know 10 years old and being like six more years until i can drive now i'm 25 going to be 26 next year 
Um, so life moves fast. So I've been trying to really soak up the moments like while I'm in them, you know, like even on the podcast, like this is, you know, in my head, I'm like, this is so much fun. I really appreciate the conversation and all that, or, you know, time with my son, my family. It's like, man, I love this right now. I'm going to soak it up as much as I can. Um, and that mindset happened because, you know, I've lost people in my life who I unfortunately will no longer get to create more memories with, um, or spend more time with or have conversations. So it's important to like, really like be present again. Um, yeah, but like truly like the good and the bad, um, I'm, I'm thankful for all of it. Um, a lot of things, you know, that I've went through that were bad, like fucking sucked. But now I look at them and I'm like, damn, well, you know, I got to act differently or don't, don't make that mistake again or whatever else. Um, but yeah, that's ultimately what I am. Of course, like I said, health, family, friends, uh, the choice to wake up and do, you know, the things I enjoy every day. Uh, but yeah, ultimately just the lessons that I've learned over time because they're so valuable that, you know, they're almost lessons for me that like I wouldn't have been taught if I didn't have to go through the bad to, you know, so I pulled that out of it. So that's probably right now, you know, everything. I'm thankful for everything. Like truly like life is a beautiful thing. There's a lot to experience, a lot to see. And it's really what you make it. You can wake up every day and be a piece of shit if you want to. That's fine. You know, that's your life. You can wake up. You can be great. You can wake up and help people. You can wake up and be a nice person. It's up to you. It's truly what you make it. It's like a, it's like an input and output type of thing, but not even so like sometimes you can put in a lot and not get shit out of it, but then that teaches you something. Hey, I need to, you know, shift my focus somewhere else. So like, I swear I'm, I'm thankful for everything. Like I could sit here and talk about it all day. Hell yeah. Oh yeah. Hardships being thankful for your hardships and you know, because, because not everything is always going to work out. I mean, that's the realness of it. So, you know, regardless of you know talking about losing a loved one talking about you know a job that you didn't get or something along those lines some it's not always going to work out and the more you can kind of be faced with those challenges and you know those unforeseen or unfortunate circumstances you know the more well-tuned as a person you'll be and you know knock on wood that any of those situations happen again you'll be more ready for it and it goes with like, I always like to say, like, you know, imagine you put two people next to each other. One is, you know, perfect, had the perfect life, no issues, you know, everything's going good for him. And then you have another person that's, you know, half and half dealt with some stuff, had had a decent life, though. And then, you know, you give them because it's going to happen. I mean, you know, if you have a great life, kudos to you and I'm, um, you know, be grateful for that hundred percent, but it's not always like that. I mean, if you have those two people and then something bad comes up, that person that had everything good is just going to crumble. And, you know, the person that's dealt with it is going to know what to do. So it's definitely, um, I liked how you touched on, you know, being thankful for your good times, not only your good times, but your bad times, because that's something that, you know, again, people kind of overlook, you know, instead of taking it, instead of, just taking it and, you know, letting it dwell and being like, ah, oh, that's unfortunate that happened instead of picking something from it and learning something from it and being a more well-rounded, well-tuned person. So I love yeah, that. Yeah, dude, for sure. I mean, I, I used to be that person that would dwell on shit. And sometimes, yeah. depending on what it is, I may dwell a little longer than I should. Or that and I that's want. all right. And that's all right. You but know, but I, at least I'm like, you know, aware of it and I work on it. You know what I mean? But like back yeah. then, dude. Yeah, like while I was going through some of this stuff, I'm not. Maybe another episode I'll dive into some. Yeah, of this we shit. don't gotta get personal. We know, yeah, and those, yeah. those that know know. But you yeah, know, of course. But you know, like during, I'm like, man, this is, this is fucked. Like, I like, why, why, why is this happening? You know what I mean? And now more so, like, I find myself that I get more aggravated over little tiny things that could easily be prevented than like major shit. Yeah. Like when something major happens, I'm like, I'm like calm. I'm like, you know, like all right, like we got to figure this out. You know what I mean? Right. Like, but like something little, you know what I mean? Like just something stupid. I'll be like, really? Well, you yeah, also, you, know? you kind of can, you know, get a little bit more frustrated about the small things because the big things, like you said, require action and you need to figure it out. So you don't really have time to dwell on it or, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, I'm a work in progress just oh, like well. everyone else. And, uh, you know, I mean, it is what it is. And calling yourself out. Like, I recognize behaviors I have that 
I want to get, you know, better at and, you know, what, what I need to be consistent on and stuff like that. Because just because I'm sitting here telling all this stuff, you know what I mean? Like I'm going through it myself. Like I don't tell you guys anything that I haven't gone through or that I'm not going through. Like, it's just real, it's real stuff. And like, I'm telling you this stuff, like not to preach, but to like, let you guys know that if you're thinking these thoughts, it's like, you're not the only one. And it's, it's a lot more common than you may think. Definitely. So, but yeah, that's what I'm thankful for. Hell yeah. If you're going to do something, just make sure that you like it. And if you're happy, you know what they say about what everyone else thinks. So, you know, that's the best yeah. thing. Definitely. Good ending point to wrap it all up. Bet on yourself, baby. Stay Always. true. Do the work. Double Just down on it. Any last thoughts before we fully wrap it up? No. Um, no, I'm pretty solid. This was a good episode. We're, we're, we're decent in the end right now. This was good. Um, yeah, slow, very good, bro. With the boys, you know, usual stuff. I love the podcast. You know, hopefully someday, one way or another, I'll be able to make my appearance again. It'd be cool if we could do something in person, expand the uh, expand the booth a little bit, see what we got going on. But yeah, this podcast is awesome. Definitely got to get more uh, more cool guests on. Keep the keep the tempo flowing. It's gonna be interesting when Barton goes back to Colorado and uh, see how we handle things there. But yeah, definitely pushing the podcast, pushing the rebrand, pushing everything you guys got going on. I'm excited for what's to come. So, Hell yeah, brother. I appreciate you. Good luck with all your endeavors, and thanks for taking your time out of the day to join us today, bro. Yeah, bro. Really sure. appreciate it. They got it. They got it how it was, and uh, this, was, this was a good episode. So I'm excited to see what it looks like when it's all said and done. Hell yeah, baby. And that's it. That wraps up episode six, guys. Like, comment, subscribe. We've got a new guest coming on next week for you. Super excited for that. And, yeah, I can continue to show that love, support, and we'll see you guys soon. Number King. Out. <laughs>